Yellowstone National Park is about 2.22 million acres and was established as the first national park in the world in 1872. The park has many gorgeous waterfalls, ravines, and forests. Yellowstone sits on top of a very large volcano that erupted 631,000 years ago and formed the caldera that the park sits in today. Besides the wildlife, Yellowstone is known for its vast array of over 10,000 hydrothermal features, which occur because of the magma that releases heat from under the park. The park also has about 500 geysers, which is more than half of the world's total geysers. Geysers are similar to hot springs, however, typically near the end of their plumbing, they have a constriction that makes them shoot the water out of the ground. Here's the most famous geyser in the park, Old Faithful. When we went to go see it, I think it was about 17 minutes behind schedule, but when it finally went off, it was really pretty. Now, Old Faithful isn't the only geyser in the park. There are many more, both bigger and smaller than Old Faithful. We also saw this little one that wasn't quite going yet, but it reminds me a lot of chocolate milk, so I just wanted to show you it. Mud pots, or paint pots, are another really cool feature in Yellowstone. Water from the surface collects in an impermeable depression, then thermal water underneath the depression heats the water that's inside of the depression. This is essentially a natural double boiler. If you're walking near these, you can freely fart and no one's going to know because it already smells like rotten eggs due to the hydrogen sulfide gas that's being released. There are microorganisms that can use this gas for energy, and in turn, they create sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid breaks down surrounding minerals and makes a clay bubbly pit when gas underneath tries to escape. Yellowstone is one of the only places on the planet where you can see an active travertine terrace, which is at Mammoth Hot Springs. Travertine terraces occur when thermal water with high concentrations of dissolved limestone rises through limestone formations. Travertine is a chalky white mineral that is formed when carbon dioxide is released and calcium carbonate is dumped off. This is the mineral that forms these beautiful structures which resemble an inside-out cave. Here are some hot springs, which are home to some very special microorganisms called thermophiles, otherwise known as heat lovers. These can actually be found in various hydrothermal features in Yellowstone. These thermophiles will form colorful mats of themselves, and they're also known as extremophiles because they live in extreme conditions such as extreme heat. Each different type of thermophile creates a different color, and you can see when it gets too hot for one type of thermophile when the color changes. For instance, the orange, red, and yellow groupings are all going to be different types of thermophiles. Now in the center of the hot springs, it's blue because it's very hot and practically nothing can live there. Light from the sky is reflecting off the water, giving that beautiful blue color. Now a bacteria, Thermus aquaticus, was found in a hot spring in the 1960s. One of the most significant things that came from this finding was that scientists were able to figure out a way to replicate DNA faster using this bacteria. If you've ever heard of the PCR test, that technique would not be possible without this bacteria. But anyway, come along with me and let's explore the flora and fauna of Yellowstone National Park. All right, first we have prickly milk vetch, which is a herbaceous mat forming perennial plant with white to purple flowers. This species can be found on rocky slopes or in sandy areas. I found this prickly milk vetch while hiking up a trail near a waterfall and catching my breath. Flowery Phlox is another mat forming perennial plant with beautiful white flowers. I really like this species and it was quite interesting because I didn't see any really vigorous plants of this species until we got up to where there was snow on the mountains. Down at lower elevations, this species was present, but all the species I had seen looked like they were a bit raggedy. Alpine Forget-Me-Not is our third mat forming perennial of Yellowstone. However, this one has beautiful blue flowers with a yellow central ring. This species is typically one of the first to bloom in cold areas. We also found this one once we reached snow up in the mountains, but we didn't see any of this species lower down in the park. Silky Phacelia is a funky looking herbaceous perennial and is probably my favorite plant find from Yellowstone. The flowers are a pretty purplish blue color and the stamen are the same color as the rest of the flower, but the anthers of the stamen are yellow, so the plant has this really pretty fringy look to it. Besides cosmetic characteristics, the species is cyanogenic, which means that it can create cyanide and store it in its tissues. Additionally, 
silky phacelia bioaccumulates gold from the soil. Now, with that being said, this species is said to frequently occur near gold mines. Bison are large herbivorous mammals that can weigh up to 2,000 pounds, live around 12 to 15 years, and run up to 30 miles per hour. If you'll notice, this bison is standing in a patch of bare soil. That's because he just rolled around on the ground, creating a wallow. These wallows are very important in prairie habitats as they open up spaces for pioneer plant species to move in, and these wallows can even accumulate water. Now, the Yellowstone bison herd is the only herd of bison in the lower 48 states that was never hunted to extinction. They even show natural behaviors like battling for mates and migration. Though in the early 1900s, the herd was down to just 23 individuals due to poaching. But because of substantial conservation work since then, the herd is now up to over 5,000 individuals. We were lucky enough to stumble upon this chunk of the herd during our visit, and while we were out there, I counted each visible bison, and there was around 300 that I could see. Bald eagles were deemed the national symbol of the United States by Congress in 1782. These beautiful birds spend most of their time near lakes and rivers feeding on fish, but they may occasionally feed on dead animals or waterfowl. In 1967, the bald eagle was listed as an endangered species in 43 states due to habitat destruction, hunting, and pesticides. However, after restrictions were put in place on those things, the bald eagle showed population growth and was delisted as an endangered species in 2007. The bison of Yellowstone have only a few predators, and one of those is the fearsome grizzly bear. Here we have a mama grizzly bear with two little cubs. And don't worry, I was super duper far away with my camera on maximum zoom. Grizzly bears and black bears can both be found in Yellowstone, but grizzly bears are about two times bigger, have more of a plate-like face, and are more aggressive. Grizzly bears are omnivores, can weigh up to 700 pounds, live around 15 to 30 years, can climb, and can run at speeds up to 40 miles per hour. In 1975, grizzly bears were listed as threatened in the lower 48 states because of habitat loss and hunting. These bears also have huge home ranges anywhere from 300 to 2,000 square miles, so they would frequently cross paths with humans. Back in 1975, there were about 150 grizzly bears in Yellowstone, but due to some excellent conservation work, as of 2019, that number has increased to about 728 bears. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about Yellowstone National Park with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.